Welcome to the Final Wager's Guide to Game Theory. Today, we're going to look at expected value and independent events. Expected value is what you'd expect to average after playing a game an infinite number of times. In other words, it's the weighted average of all outcomes, where weighted is when you take probability into account. I'm going to roll a die 25 times. What do you think the average of these 25 rolls will be? We start off with a 1. Then we get a 2. We keep going, and the numbers are staying pretty low to start. But eventually, the average makes its way up and up and up. Where do you think it will end? After 25 rolls, we have an average of 2.96. Let's see if the math bears this out. To calculate the expected value, you first find the probability of each outcome. On a fair die, the odds that you roll 1 are 1 in 6. The odds of rolling a 2 are 1 in 6. And this is the case with every face of the die. The total of all probabilities is 1, or 100%. Our next step in calculating expected value is to multiply the probability of each outcome by the associated payoff. This will give us the weighted payoff for that outcome. If we roll 1, the payoff will be 1. We multiply that by the probability, 1 over 6, to get a weighted payoff of 1 over 6. The weighted payoff of a roll of 2 will be 2 times 1 sixth, which gives us 2 over 6. And so on down the line. Our total ends up being 21 over 6, which translates to an expected value of 3.5. Why were we so far off? Well, Remember that we rolled the die only 25 times. The expected value takes into account an infinite number of rolls. I rolled the die 75 more times, and after 100 rolls, the average was 3.51. You can see in this chart how the line approaches 3.5. Now let's look at the payoffs associated with this mixed strategy in Final Jeopardy wagering. You'll need to calculate the probability of each combination. Both players wager small, the leader wagers small and the trailer wagers large, the leader wagers large and the trailer wagers small, and both players wager large. If both players make their selections randomly, they will be what are called independent events. Another example of an independent event is flipping a coin. Whether you flip heads on this turn will not affect the probability of flipping heads in the future. A lot of gamblers get into trouble this way, and I'll show you why in a bit. For independent events, we multiply the probability of each individual event occurring to figure out how often all of the events occur simultaneously. For example, what's the probability of flipping three heads in a row? The odds of flipping a head on your first turn? One half. The odds of flipping heads on your second turn? One half. On your third turn? One half. The probability of flipping heads three times in a row, therefore, is 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, 1 eighth. Let's return to the matrix and calculate some probabilities. If both players randomly use their optimal mixed strategies, what are the odds they'll both wager small? The probability that the leader wagers small is 1 over 3. The probability that the trailer wagers small is 1 over 3. 1 third times 1 third equals 1 ninth. So if the players were to do this an infinite number of times, we expect to see both players wager small one out of every nine times. We can do the same thing for the other cells. The leader wagers small with probability one-third, and the trailer wagers large with probability two-thirds. So that intersection is two-ninths. The probability that the leader will wager large and the trailer small is also two-ninths. Finally, each player will wager large 2 out of every 3 times, so the probability that both wager large is 4 over 9. Note that here, 2, adding the probabilities inside, will give you a total of 1, or 100%. Step 2. We multiply the probability of each event by the respective payoffs. If both players wager small, the leader will win 100% of the time, 
while the trailer will win 0% of the time. We multiply each of these by 1 ninth. The probability both will select this strategy. In that cell, we're left with an expected payoff of 100 over 9 for the leader and 0 for the trailer. We do this for each cell. Our final step is to sum the scaled payoffs. We'll work from the top left and add each payoff to our grand total in the middle. We start with 100 over 9 comma 0. Then we add 100 over 9 to each. And again, 100 over 9 more. Finally, from the bottom right, when both go large, we add 300 over 9 to the leader's total and 100 over 9 to the trailers, giving us a grand total of 600 over 9 for the leader and 300 over 9 for the trailer. These reduce to an expected value of around 67% for the leader and 33% for the trailer. In other words, the leader will win with probability two-thirds. Now back to our gambling problem. <laughs> Let's say you're playing roulette. The last seven spins have been 11, 24, 28, 35, 11, 11, and 4. Now a typical gambler might think, red is due! But in fact, the roulette wheel has no memory. The next spin is just as likely to be black as it is to be red. This is called the gambler's fallacy, and it's something to which many a poor soul has fallen victim. And roulette isn't even a good game to play. If you're going to be at a casino, craps and blackjack provide much better odds. But that's a discussion for another time, perhaps even here, on the final wager. <laughs>